Hello, my name's Ben. And my name's Josh. Welcome back to FBL Graduates. Welcome back to another video where today we're going to be going through our match day to team reveals. Now, a word of warning, we are recording this before the Portugal game is even finished. The deadlines come thick and fast in Euro Fantasy. So this team may change ever so slightly going into the deadline, but this is our team at the moment going into match day two. Let's get straight into it. Okay, then, so kicking off into my team, I'm playing my Limitless Chip this week. I'm going all out in the group stage with my strategy. I'm going to be using my wild card next week, and then obviously it's free transfers for everyone in the round of 16. So, yeah, let's get started. Uh, Levakovic and Castiles are in goal. Um, obviously, if you've seen our Limitless draft last night, you would know that obviously these two guys were the goalkeepers in there. I don't see it changing too much, to be honest. I think... For me, it's an easy way to get a Belgian player in there without thinking too much about it. And obviously, worst case scenario, if Croatia do concede to Albania, I've got that easy switch in there. Going into the defence, we've got obviously Cancelo, who did st well, has started for Portugal. We are recording this literally just before kickoff of the Portugal game um, with Nuno Menge and... Dallo, which is interesting because there's no Paulinha in that team to start things off. They're playing like almost like a five-back system, which is interesting. Not something that we thought would happen. So, yeah, that'll be interesting. Obviously, you guys will know how that sort of panned out. Um, in the in the actual defence on the pitch, obviously, as I mentioned, we've got Gavardio in there. Um, he picked up some decent positions going forwards, obviously, for Croatia against um, Spain. We just have to wait and see if that sort of portrays itself into that Albania game. Obviously, I know they lost 3-0, Croatian, that's probably not a good sign for a good defence, but I think Spain are a really good team and definitely not the same sort of a calibre of attack of an Albania. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Obviously, Trent in there, played midfield. I expect him to play midfield again um, against Denmark. It'll be interesting to see how he fares. I thought from an attacking point of view, he didn't really offer much going forwards. There weren't anything there, but saying that, England weren't great going forwards either. Um, so yeah, and then ball recoveries wise, there weren't too much there either. So if you wanted to, I think you could go elsewhere here. But I think for in terms of a clean sheet potential, England defensively are always quite sound. So yeah, fingers crossed, uh, England do keep a clean sheet on Thursday. Um, and then we've got Theo Hernandez, as we mentioned in the other video in Limitless, Limitless Draft. Really attacking. I think he's probably the most likely to change out of this draft though, because he does play the Netherlands there is chance of attacking threat and it'll be interesting to see how France set up obviously if they do are missing Bappe which is incredibly likely I think you know Giroud will probably start up top and then we're talking about a whole different game plan in terms of getting attacking returns for France uh, and then finally Mittelstadt he's four million euros which is wild to say on a limitless draft but I just don't think there's a better German defensive option that has better attacking threat i was looking for joshua kimmich but he is for some reason classified as a midfielder in this game which is really frustrating because i did think he looked really dangerous going forwards i think he obviously picked up an assist as well so yeah shame that he's not classified as defender what's your thoughts on that um goalkeeper and defense lineup then yeah, I think it's a decent line. I think there's a there's a potential couple of changes you can make there. Um, obviously, we know that Kobe Mainu is doing press for England um, ahead of the game. So that might be Southgate playing a couple of games. It might be him sort of giving an indication of who's going to be in the starting 11. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, I think regardless of whether he starts or not, when he gets the minutes, he's going to be an attacking threat. So um, you're looking at high upside, potentially a low floor, but, you know, you could, with the defenders, you can never be sure of clean sheets anyway. Um, I do like Mittelstadt. I agree with you. Biggest attacking threat out of all the defenders. Um, Gvardio, a good pick. And I like the Croatian double up. That's something that I'm possibly looking at doing myself. It's not currently what I've got, but I'm looking at that as well. Teo Hernandez, again, I agree with you. It's a tough fixture, but his, the fact he was so attacking there might be an increased reliance on uh, Teo going forwards into the into the next game against the Netherlands because, you know, their strengths, the Dutch, are out wide as well. I think the game's going to be won and lost on those wings. Um, and Hernandez has been fantastic in that opening game and has been fantastic, really, for the last few seasons for France and for AC Milan too. Yeah, and then moving on into the midfield, this is where it gets a little bit tasty. So we have the German double-up of Musiala and Wurz. I'm opting for them over Gundogan, who I had in my team last week. Obviously, 
he didn't take the penalty. I feel like if he didn't get absolutely mullered in that challenge, he probably would have, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, but yeah, I think Musiala and Verts from open play, they just looked incredible, particularly Musiala. I know he's a little bit more expensive, which is what's nice about this limitless chip. You can obviously pick these sort of premium assets that you wouldn't choose normally. Um, so yeah, really happy with them. And as you can see, Musiala does have the armband for the first day of the match day. Obviously, Bellingham is up next. Don't really need to touch on him too much. I just think he was absolutely incredible for England. By far the best, probably, player on the pitch. And he, definitely the best midfielder on the pitch. I thought Saka played okay. Phil Foden was just non-existent. And we really need to find a way to sort of get the best out of him. Because he just looks like a totally different player when he plays for England at the minute. Uh, Marcel Sabitzer is next, which is a little bit different. Obviously, he does play a lot more further forward for Austria than he does for maybe like Borussia Dortmund at club level. He's on penalties as well for Austria. I thought Poland defensively were okay, nothing crazy, but I did like the way that Austria set up. And I think under Ralph Ranić, we've seen it since he's taken over. He's got them playing really well. I think they've been unbeaten until last night up against France, and they still only lost 1 0 and had some chances themselves. So, yeah, for me, he's a little bit differential and probably will be my captain if I need it on those 21st of June fixtures. Obviously, that is the day of that France Netherlands fixture. And for me, with no Mbappe at the moment, um, confirmed to be out sort of things I think it's differential captaincy sort of territory where I'll be going on that day rather than picking maybe a Antoine Griezmann or someone like that to take up a forward spot which there is just not enough forward spots on this game unfortunately and then Bruno Fernandes as we said before we obviously haven't seen Portugal play so far but I imagine he'll be super integral to how they perform on the pitch what's your thoughts on that midfield Ben? Yeah, I really like the midfield and I like the Sabitzer pick. Um, it also means that, you know, if you wanted to double down, you could probably drop to Hernandez because you you know you've got a uh, you know you've got a pick there that you can you can potentially go for for the captaincy. Um yeah, really good. All the players that played looked that you got there look really decent and uh I don't see too much missing from that. Um obviously one differential is really nice to have always and it sort of breaks up your Fairly template start to the team, um, it's fair to say. So, yeah, really decent. No complaints at all about any of the players you picked there. Yeah, and then quickly touching on the forward line, Kane, Ronaldo, Lukaku. Obviously, it's probably the most basic template front three that any limitless draft will have this week. Uh, Ronaldo will be interested to see his minutes, obviously, as we said before, the Portugal game at the moment. Lukaku, I actually don't know how that bloke didn't score a goal against Slovakia. Two goals ruled out, three big chances missed. It was just absolutely criminal how he came away with no returns in that game. But it's a good sign for anyone who's picking those Belgium assets going forwards, especially the attackers. And I think that's something that maybe this draft lacks is maybe another Belgium attacker like a De Bruyne or Trossard, which obviously could potentially come in for one of those midfield assets. But it's very difficult to take one of those out at the moment. And then obviously, yeah, Harry Kane, unlucky not to score against Serbia. I think we'll definitely see him on the score sheet against Denmark. A lot di a lot more different that sort of style of game. I think Denmark will probably come out and attack England a lot more than Serbia did, especially in the opening half an hour or first half. What's your thoughts on those attackers, Ben? Are they the three that you'd have on Limitless? Yeah, those are the three that I'd have at the moment, obviously pending Portugal's performance tonight. Um, yeah, fairly standard, fairly template. Again, not too much complaints about it. Okay, so moving on into my team, and we'll start off in goal. We've got Jordan Pickford in there as our coverage for England defence. I do think I need England coverage in, in my team. I'm obviously on a wild card, so I'm constrained slightly by budget, which means, you know, dropping 0.5 for like a Trent, if for example, to get Pickford makes it worthwhile for me. Yes, we may not get too many save points. He only saved one shot in that game against Serbia, but... If he does get the clean sheet, that's always a bonus. Um, and then the backup goalkeeper, we've actually gone for Patrick Pence of Austria. I'm in a similar view to Josh that Austria set up really tactically quite well. He only had to make three saves against France. So against Poland, I don't think there's going to be too many shots. It's obviously dependent on whether Lewandowski is back. But for four million, it's an easy way into that Austrian team. So I'm really liking that. Moving on into the defence as well, we've got Wout Faze of Belgium. Again, picked up a load of ball recoveries, 4 million, really cheap. Um, sort of the budget enablers in the defence particularly are looking really good. There's two or three standout ones. The other one is Mittelstadt, who 
just like Josh mentioned, he's probably got the best threat from it. Any of the German defenders. We've also got Teo Hernandez and Gradiol, so it's fairly similar, the Limitless to the wildcard. And I think that's a theme that you'll find with the with the wildcard Limitless. There's a couple of changes when you go further forward, but that defence, the template is certainly fairly settled. Um, and then on the bench, I've also got Cancelo. So that's the defence and the keepers. Josh, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, really like the Pence pick. I think he's he's fantastic. And I thought, like we mentioned earlier, the Austria team was set up really well. I also think when he did have to make a save, he made it really well as well. He made some really good saves in that game. Um, I think, is he 4 million? Am I right in saying that? 4 million, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. absolutely budget, budget enabler. Saves you a lot of money. So wild card is for me. If I was in that position, I'd 100% have him in. Um, yeah, like what you're doing with Pickford as well in terms of covering England defence. I think that's an absolute must. Most people have someone like a Gahey at the minimum. Um, so, yeah, Pickford looked pretty good in that game as well against Serbia. And as you say, it's the rest of the defence sort of picks itself. And obviously, Woot Face is a really, really good asset. And obviously, again, you'd expect him to pick up a lot of ball recoveries in these fixtures in the group stage. Okay, yeah. So moving on into the midfield, and we've also gone with the German double up. However, we've gone with Wurz and Gundawan still instead. We've carried on with him. His underlying stats were actually really, really good. And in fact, I'd probably go as far to say they were on par with the likes of Wurz and Musiala. He was just a little bit unlucky not to get sort of more returns than just that one penalty one. Um, again, like Josh said, he could be on penalties. I think the the way that he played was fantastic um, against Scotland and I anticipate that continuing. I think it's a roulette really with the German attackers. You could pick any two of those midfielders and attackers and and one of them's going to pop off and, and sort of score a, a big, big haul. So it's all about playing the numbers and I've played it there with Gundogan. He's, he's cheap enough as well to, to justify making that move over someone like Musiala, saving a full 1.5 million. So fairly happy with that. Um, as I mentioned sort of in the previous video, I've got Lovro Maja from Croatia at the moment at 6.5 million. It's not the pick that I love the most, but for budget reasons at 6.5 million, he looks quite decent against an Albania side that, you know, looked fairly decent but you know I think Croatia can get at them um, so I've got him in there and one who I actually really like and I think is quite a sort of maybe a little bit overlooked in terms of a differential is Granit Xhaka he picked up five points um, in match day one without actually getting a return uh, he got 90 minutes and player of the match for five points which is crazy but again the stats and underlying stats showed that he was really unlucky not to get a return. So I'm fairly content with having him as a £6 million budget enabler at the moment. The the one move that I could potentially make here would be Madger potentially up to someone like Trossard and maybe go all out on that Belgium sort of attack um, and maybe downgrade Teo Hernandez to a Croatian defender. Um, there is one priced at £4 million that got 90 minutes against Spain. And... Yeah, on the bench, of course, Bruno Fernandes as well. So, Josh, what are the thoughts there on that midfield? Yeah, I think I think it looks good. Um, I, I'd probably be more inclined to that move that you said about maybe bringing in another Belgium attacker. Um, just because, obviously, it's, it's relatively unknown in terms of the Madger pick. I, I looked at him as well. I think he only managed one shot against Spain, which is obviously a different opponent than Albania. But for me, it doesn't really fill me with too much hope, that Croatian attack. And I think the return could come from anywhere um, and that's probably why I've sort of left them out of my draft personally. Granit Xhaka as you say he, I thought he played really really well against Hungary. Um, it'll be interesting to see if that sort of continues um, but yeah really nice asset and like you said under the radar at the moment um, but yeah it's, it's a nice pick and then yeah Gundogan as you mentioned I thought he played really really well super super unlucky and it's definitely true in what you're saying in terms of it's like a roulette in terms of who's going to get those points between Havertz, Gundogan, Musiala and Verts. Obviously, the first game, it was Musiala and Verts predominantly. And obviously, Havertz picked up a couple. Gundogan's super unlucky. Will he be able to bounce back in match day two? We'll have to wait and see. OK, so moving on to my strikers. And it's the same front three that Josh has. A lot of similarities between these two. Structure, really similar in terms of the teams that we're going for. It's obviously some of the players that are a little bit cheap. I've got to find those cheap gems and budget enablers there. But I've gone with the three big hitters up front. Harry Kane, Lukaku and Ronaldo. Not too much to say about them. I think they're the best front three just about in the game. 
because obviously no Mbappe means that, you know, it opens up that slot. And it made me a little bit more confident on going on a wild card because Mbappe is just that little bit more um, as a striker option than Ronaldo. It gives me a little bit more budget to play with. So that's why I've wild carded there. I think the, I think the lines are pretty fine between a wild card and a limitless this week compared to next week. Like it's going to be quite close in terms of points output in theory, we'll see if that plays out. But Josh, yeah, what's the thoughts on the front three and then the uh, the overall team? Yeah, it, it looks nice. And obviously, that's the front three that I have. I think what will be interesting, obviously, we're recording this before Portugal. If Ronaldo was to get taken off, say, 60, 60th minute, something like that, it'll be interesting because obviously you could maybe downgrade him to like a Havertz and then that gives you a serious amount more budget to sort of put into that midfield. Um, so, yeah, definitely an avenue of attack that way. And it'll be interesting to see how this Portugal game turns out. I know we mentioned it about 10 times every time we spoke yeah. about it. But, yeah, it'll be good to see. OK, then, so that wraps up our team reveals on this match day two morning. Let us know what your team's looking like in the comments. Don't forget to obviously make all those transfers and those captaincy changes before the deadline at 2 p.m. Absolutely. And remember to like, comment and subscribe to FPL Graduates. And as usual, I've been Ben. I've been Josh. And we'll see you guys. Later. Have a good match day, everyone. So you may